you see anybody that doesn't want to pray, don't take that person serious. And in case you are a man of God and you are pastoring people, and people are bringing issues for you. They are telling you all their problems, all the things they are passing through. What, some of them will even be telling you that they have calling, but they don't want to pray. And those people are sent to frustrate you in ministry. Mm. There are many unnecessary counseling sessions that pastors have found themselves in. Those counseling sessions and counseling lines would have been reduced hmm? if people were brought into prayer. Because the more you are praying, the more God begins to provide answers by priesthood. Amen. If you are with me, say Amen. And you can pray for long and then beyond your own problem God will now start using you as a channel as a vehicle, a conduit of answers you might not get to pray for somebody but this your mouth is the solution somebody just speaks to you casually you will be dishing out solutions to people because of priesthood. Majority of what people are suffering from can be traced to negligence in priesthood or insufficiency in priesthood. When you pray long enough, the whole thing will begin to come together. In fact, when you pray long enough, you will be asking yourself, that's if you are wise, you'll be saying, what have I been doing? If I knew it was like this, why are, we, why are we wasting time? Why didn't we give ourselves to this for five years? Huh? If you see a man that gives himself to genuine priesthood for one to three hours every day consistently huh? and do it for ten years, at five years, the man has sorted out the majority of the things that he needs to do on this face of the earth. After that time, all he needs to be taking is action. 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 Implementation. But what we see is people that go off. When they now go off, or along the way now, they will now meet challenge. They will now go, come back and start doing, and I hope you know that there are many things you can't start doing when you are already in the middle of the game. If it was before, you can what? You can do it. Assuming is marriage. There are many things you can't do in the middle of the marriage now. Hmm? But before it, you can, you can use priesthood and organize many things. You can use priesthood and push the person you are supposed to marry. You don't marry now. Ah. You can use priesthood and push the person to where he or she is supposed to, supposed to be. I hope you know that the person you marry impacts. If you have a calling, it, it impacts on it. It might not be that you will not fulfill again, but it will have impact on it. A young pastor brought a lady and told the man of God that this is the person I want to marry. That the person meets all my requirements. Hmm? Meets all my requirements. And then, as they were going on, the pastor now said, oh, I have bring the lady, let's see. They brought the lady and the pastor was telling the lady, I hope you know that this guy is a man of God, that this is what this kind of calling entails. 
<laughs> you know what the lady told her? The lady said, I've been telling him, oh, I don't want to marry a pastor. <laughs> the guy was doing the lady like this. God is saving his life. He's doing like this. Why? Are you now getting the point? So when you now marry that kind of person, you say you are going on three days dry. How? You say God sent you on uh, missions to Kogi State. Huh? That God sent you on mission to Plateau State. The person will say, I'm not aware. I'm not saying you should not follow Jesus, but not, not abandon. You have abandoned me and your children. And you left us here. And then you probably call me on the phone or tell me, say, uh, man of God, pastor, they have, my wife doesn't want me to serve Jesus. I feel that she's a witch. No. You are the wizard that, that made the witch. You are the real wizard. Because... <laughs> You are, you are the wizard. Because that's not, that's not what they plan for. Meanwhile, when you give yourself to priesthood, it sorts out this kind of thing. There is a way you pray. Uh, Joshua, you have not prayed that way. I'm hoping that maybe next year. Because you have not received an angel. The way we pray, there is an angel we pray with. No, you can't try it. If you think I'm joking, we will continue. Huh? By 12 midnight today, then we will now start praying. That's when we will now start praying. By 12 midnight. All this thing is just to charge your battery. Check your plug. Check whether there is oil. Because it's an engine. There is a journey. Some people have it, but what they have is, I pass my neighbor. Have you used Tiger Gen? Tiger Gen. Sometimes if you pop well, it can go. It can go for long, but it doesn't carry much. The reason why it goes for long is because it doesn't what? Carry much. Do you have Tiger Gen? You have not used it. Now I'm asking. You have used it before. So you understand what I'm saying. The day you make the mistake of plugging an electric iron on it, it will do wow. The reason why people still survive on Tiger Gen is because the weight of their destiny has not come upon their priesthood. The day it comes, they can't carry it. You will see now. Maybe when the person now realizes he's called to politics or called to whatever, and then you now arrive at that place, you find out that that clothes they are wearing and giving speech is not politics. The giving of speech eh? and saying, Let the, that's not the real politics. The real politics is priesthood. If not, you will sit on that seat and another person will be what will be the person governing. Why? It's after me, priesthood. Another young lady met a pastor and said that my husband is now beating me, and there is a room in the house that nobody opens the room. Uh -uh. Until one day I went on three days dry fasting and I went to the room and then I opened it. Pastor, you need to see what I saw there. Pastor now asked him, are you not aware that this kind of thing is there? He said, I'm aware. But it's just that I didn't know it's like this. And the guy, the guy has my number. See, after me, has my number. You are, you, the ladies are quiet. There is such a thing as a guy having what? your number. I don't know your number. Hmm? The guy has, and because the guy has the number, he now forgot, he for, she forgot her training. And then when she now entered, one day they will use you to finish the charm. And I hope you know when you are with that person legally, some certain measures of prayer and intercession will not affect the person. Household witchcraft. Have you not heard of household witchcraft? There is such a thing as after me household witchcraft. Do you know why it is called household witchcraft? Because you cannot come and say, 
to house is you cannot come and say to household which by fire die i bind you no you are already bound to that person by one or two legamies are you getting the point that's why if Satan really if real witchcraft wants to work it has to be within legal premise somebody within you that has the legal right to be operating why am i going here let me quickly retrieve back so priesthood has the capacity to arrange things the bible said that our god is able to do exceeding what abundantly more than we can what be so there is there is no matter how much you, there are people that want to ask for things there no matter how much you know and ask it is not up to one three quarter of what you need to run your life that's what i want to tell you no matter the prayer you think you are praying about your life is not up to three quarter of what you need to run your life so there is a, not an island and the name of that island is more than you can ever what ask or think in fact the word that the scripture gave there is exceeding what about is tautology is it not tautology exceeding abundant the, it's just that there is no sufficient lingo to communicate what the man is trying to bring us into he's trying to say that there is a realm in that place prayer points can capture it what we do there is we start generating incense start generating incense start generating incense. you will find out that there will be many things that will happen in your life that you did not remember when you prayed for it meanwhile something happened to make it possible if you are with me say amen so today we will start a very um important topic <laughs> God will help us the truth is that what I'm about to teach you now you need an ear say after me an ear how is it that the Bible is saying let him that have what an ear and I say what is this how many ears do you have huh? but God is saying if you want to hear him how will you hear him let him that have an ear. So where is the location of this ear? On your head. Let him that have an ear hear. So when you begin to come to teachings like this, and it borders on matters of destiny, hmm? a lot of the things I'm trying to, I will show you, is bordering on self-application. It also borders on a lot of probability, possibility, potentialities. The implication is that we have a lot of parts to play to either make this thing work for us or not work for us. You must understand, people give people give God a lot of responsibility, give him back a lot of responsibility that he has given to us. If I say something now, it will seem as if I oversaid it. But um, there is a lot of things that will never happen if man does not take initiative, if man does not step out. Have you not noticed? In fact, it is actually in the scripture that the summary of the plans of God, the purposes of God, is through man. Are you now getting the point? The implication of that is that many things, God is the one doing it all. But he will have to find a man through whom he will do that. And until he gets that kind of man, that purpose will be hanging. There is so much of emphasis and example in the scripture supporting this position. Now, if, listen, remember that Moses, in fact, prophecy have captured Moses. Huh? So much that... Um, even the people that had that we are bound in Egypt, they, many of them were not aware of the pro prophecy that captured their season. They just appeared and they say they are in Nigeria in 2021. Believe it or not, there is prophecy that have captured this our season in the annals of God. 
Huh? I'll show you people because my teaching is the price for divine election. One of the key things we are going to look into is discernment. Being able to understand where God is now in his eternal purpose and agenda. Both for your life and for a people. He cannot do more than are you getting the point? And your strength and rank in those seasons is determined by how much you are aligned to that thing that God is in. I will show you one of my points is alignment. I will show you. And if you are not aligned and you are doing something very mighty, but that thing is not in support of what God is trying to do now. Huh? In fact, God himself will fight you. Tower of Babel was a mighty thing that they are building. <laughs> but as far as God is concerned, that thing is anti, anti agenda, anti purpose of God. And there are other things that are good, but they are off season. And because they are off season, it is not also part of God's plan. Hmm? I mean, it's not bad. Though. God planned to do it, but this is not the time. It is also off. And because of that, anybody that is trying to do that, we, you will, the Bible calls it, you will make a shipwreck because your faith will suffer damage because there is no foundation. The foundation of unshakable faith is the will of God because faith is not something abstract. Faith is hanging on a reality, a substance. And it is God that substantiates things. Remember, it is spiritual. He is the one that makes it a substance in the realm of the spirit. So if the will of God is not known, then what we call out faith is not faith. Because it's God that substantiates it. That's why when you read the scripture, the scripture, the Bible you have, is, is already a written documentation of the expression of the will of God. Is it not true? So, you don't need to pray again to find out whether this thing can, can be the basis of your faith. Are you getting the point? Because we have known already that the Bible eh, is a written documentation of the will of God. And if it is true, then it can be the basis. It can substantiate our faith. Amen. I think about four to five years ago, I had an encounter. <laughs> Those days, um, I know that God called me, but you know, this calling of 18 has a lot to do with faith. It has a lot to do with faith. Faith, real faith is not name it and, naming it and claiming it. Father, in this week, Father, in this week, new car. Make, make people buy my gas. <laughs> make people buy my perfume. Uh, it can happen, no. But that's not real faith. Real faith is being able to trap within your vessel the counsel of God per time. And then you come out like this and you look every single thing or many things are not helping but you insist until that thing begins to manifest many times there will be nothing in need for you if there is nothing in need for you will you continue you don't know faith yet go and read the book of Hebrews chapter 11 in fact by the time you are ending in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 the Bible said that these people after they have done they didn't receive the promise because they God decided that they will not be made complete without us. I said, what is this? If you are with me, say amen. amen. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Pay attention. Pay attention. This, is, this thing I'm teaching you is why many people have lost out on many things. You know, let me lay a foundation. We are we are in years of transition. Not just in the body of Christ, in the world. 
We are in the years of political transition, religious transition, economic transition. There are new eco economic models that is coming up that wasn't there before. Things like cryptocurrency, nobody, are you getting the point? You are, see, look beyond the money thing there. People like us, I'm not bound to money. I look at the signs. What are the signs in the sky? Are you getting what I'm saying? That thing is a sign in the sky. It means that there is a transition. Huh? It means there is a transition in the economic world. If you check where, there is also a transition in the political, there is also a transition in the religious. This one, all of us know the religious. Because if you check in the last five years, we, we have lost count of how many generals that have left. Billy Graham, Renard Bonke, Ravi Zacharias. Help me and call them. Huh? Maurice Sorulo, Young Cho. Uh -huh. Continue. David Parson. Uh -huh. They have not finished though. Continue. There are many. If I remember some, I will tell you. Huh? No, it's long. Now, those things are not just to say they died. They are signs. Huh? You know, <laughs> many people, when those things happen, they will say, ah, this man died this night, that the gate of water is there, you should pray this night. Leave that thing. Kai! Leave that thing. They, they don't know. Pray so that what will happen. I have taught you people repeatedly here that don't chase something. Make yourself suitable for that thing. God will, that thing will be looking for you. The problem is that there are many people that want things, want positions, mantles, but they are not ready. They lack the will with that, the competence within their vessel that have the capacity to trap those dimensions is lacking. Meanwhile, those people are seeking that those things should come upon them. It will not come. Because God is an investor. And God is such an investor that he doesn't like losing out. Huh? Instead of God to lose out, to lose. Huh? In Forex, if you want to lose, is there a point you will say, no, I know they do again. You collect your money and go. Huh? Hey, bro, is there a point you can say, my money is going. And then you collect your money and say, I know they do. Huh? What is it called? Huh? Huh? Take profit. Huh? Stop loss. Stop loss. <laughs> God, they do stop loss. I'm telling you. If he is using Joshua, using and hoping that something will come out of your life. Meanwhile, this is the requirement. Hmm? First one, loss. So, and loss is going. And his time is going, and the season is going. You know what you do? He will press. Say after me, stop loss. May God not press stop loss in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. But many people, in fact, should I tell you, 80% of the people crying, God use me, God is using us. God is pressing stop loss up and down everywhere. That's I'm you know, me, I'm a prophetic teacher. So I'm saying many prophetic things as I'm teaching already. If you are not wise, you have not heard anything. I've said three things. What did you hear? I said, come with an ear. It's the burden of God. Satan didn't want me to teach this thing I'm teaching. You. It took much fasting and prayer for me to now stand here and be teaching it. So if you like, don't hear it. If you like, don't hear and then you leave and misbehave. The reason is because you don't. If you are here, today and hearing this thing then God had great thing for you it's not coincidence mm, yes it's not coincidence so there is transition in the spirit and once there is transition then there will be a lot of vacancy say after me vacancy you did not hear me say after me vacancy there is a lot of vacancies in the spirit vacancies in positions vacancies in um um offices, anointings, mantles, executions, territories, spheres, there are vacancies. You don't even need to be a prophet to know that there is a lot of vacancy in the Nigerian political sector. Everywhere you are going, and it's the same thing in Africa, there is vacancy. There is vacancy. And 
what the what the antichrist the way he will come is to create a lot of vacancy vacancy is not <laughs> vacancy do, it doesn't necessarily mean that nobody is sitting there physically ah, no that's not what i'm saying i mean people are still in position political we still have governors present everywhere but in the spirit huh? the seat is vacant the seats are vacant rather the implication is that God has not found competent men to represent him in such spheres guess what that's actually the model that the antichrist will bring he will create a lot of vacuum and need eh, within circles and his target will be to bring by um, uh, uh, his own mood a, a kind of succor to those need and then people will now run to him because he's the one that is solving their problem if you're with me say amen. amen a lot of vacancies so much i saw so much vacancy that i came out and i'm wondering why why is there this so much meanwhile people are roaming everywhere even in the relief there is so much vacancy there, there is scarcity of men you think people are around <laughs> I'm not saying it, oh God. I'm saying this thing with burden. If it's not burden, I will not teach this. Huh? In fact, at some point, do you know what I wanted to do? I didn't want to teach this. I wanted to just know what God taught me because this, my teaching is from three planes. The first plane is what the Father has already shown us about this matter. The second one is what God has shown me about this matter. The third one is what the scriptures say about this matter. The three of them have to have to rhyme together. There is, there is a lot of vacancy. A lot. And it's not as if there are no people. And it's not as if God doesn't want to put people there. But there is a gross lack of competence. And unfortunately, what elects men is not your face. <laughs> What puts men in office is not God now look at your face. No. God looked at Abraham. He said, I know Abraham that he will he will teach his children to walk in a particular way so that my promise will come. So his God's was God's consuming agenda. Abraham. His consuming agenda is his purpose and promise. Are you getting the point? The reason why he chose Abraham amongst all men is because Abraham has the capacity, not just to do it himself, but to raise men. I will walk on that path so that even when he's not there, if the plan that should happen in 400 years time, eh, it happened because Abraham was able to raise a pattern in the spirit that is able to produce men having the same capacity to continue in the same ordination and pattern and make sure that the promise of God doesn't fail. I hope you know that you can start well and then when you now die the fire is no more there. I don't want to say something because but I went somewhere in Midwest recently. I went there, I stepped into, into that place where in my own opinion, the greatest man that God has raised in this work of ministry in Africa. That's my opinion anyway. Where he stood and turned that. Huh? And men heard him from time and eternity. It's my own opinion that there are men, when they speak, it's not just human beings that come to listen to them. In fact, Many times, the reason why people gather physically to listen is because there are more spirits coming to listen to that kind of person than even human beings. Eh? And when there are some spirits, when they appear in a territory, because they appear, some people will gather because they gathered. And I looked. I just saw that many things there are relics. Anyway, there are many men that carried it. But I'm not sure there is one that is remaining from them. Anyway, however God works. Matthew chapter 20. 
this my teaching is very delicate so I have to I have to stay on point <laughs> it's very delicate what I'm doing for you is is interpreting prophetic runes it's not teaching it's just that I I minister from the platform of wisdom meaning that my teachings prefer more solutions than trying to give you information would have rather been telling you what God is doing that this one that no I would rather bring it in a teaching in such a way that you will now be living your life oh. you did not hear um, Dennis, Dennis I see you man of God I see one one bed and now flow like this flow like this land and God said no you are just living your life you did not hear anything your life was able to capture that reality in the spirit is it not better is it not better that your daughter is full of visions and nothing is happening? <laughs> there are people, their daughter is full of visions and dreams, but their life is far away from it. It means that you missed it somewhere. There is a competence that you did not gather. You see, and God, I have said it, God is not loyal to persons. No matter what he told you, eh? he's loyal to his purpose. And anytime he begins to walk, give position, allot things. He allows you to the person area that will best represent his interest per moment. In fact, instead of God not to represent his interest, he will choose to use three people to achieve something that one person will achieve. If you are with me, say amen. Oh. amen. He knew, he will know that this person will do like this and then this person will do and by the third one, they will, instead of, but one person can do that. But the one person that should have done it is lazy. You are so lazy that God cannot use you. Hmm? All the time you see yourself in the dream, healing the sick, going to nations. You wake up and say, ah, I decree it. I decree it. You see it. I... And then you go. The, meanwhile, that's thing you are seeing. It so happen you are not the only one seeing it. I will show you in the scripture. Sometimes God showed one million people that vision. Huh? When he showed them, hundred thousand believed it. Hundred thousand believed it. Ten thousand did something about it. Are you getting the point? Among the ten thousand that did something about it, huh? It's only 1,000 that pressed him to where God took them serious. So, exam will now be set for those 1,000. Maybe three layers of exam. First people will fail. Is it not in your Bible? Why are you saying here? Have you not seen the army of Gideon? You are saying here. Is it not in your Bible? Is it because they did not call it selection? These are people that they want to go to warfare. God is looking for an excuse. He's the one that is going to work. He's just looking for an excuse of men, 300 men. An excuse of what? 300 men. They told them, come to the river and drink. People that didn't know that everything is a test came to the river and said, hey, make Gideon no key person. He now went to the water and be drinking. That's what will happen to many of you. Probably when you leave Sabo or better rama you say hey make make this man no key me make i rest you are a foolish person that's the reason why that's the reason why your life is the way it is because you do not understand that everything is a test if you don't know that everything is a test let me stop i have a body you know there is something i know that has brought me where i am and it's because i take everything as a test you don't relax. You, that time you are relaxing can be the test itself, the exam. And the problem with exam is that no matter how much you pray and ask God, what are you saying? What is happening? You will not hear him because you are in the exam hall. In the exam hall, will the teacher be telling you anything? Everything he needs to teach you is before you enter the exam hall. Once you are in the exam hall, you won't hear anything until you come out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Up to how many thousand soldiers did the, the, the what was the number of the Gideon army? The first, huh? 
they were they, I think they were 9,000 or how many 30 something thousand huh? how many help me and find out and they were reduced to 300 then in that 1,000 God will set first test it will reduce to 700 set second one it will reduce to 500 set the final one huh? and then they will reduce to 300 even you you will see after some time, because it, over time it, you will see the people that God is God has elected. Hmm? When you see it, you say, ah, why this guy no follow? The way, way this guy pray with us, eh? the way, way you do, you are not wise. Shh, shut up your mouth. You are darkening cancer. The day God opens books for you, eh? you will see that he is just. That's what happened between him and Job. Job was busy blabbing blabbing, blabbing, until they open book for him. When they open book for him, even him, he now said, I'm unrighteous. You are you know. There is a price for divine election. And sometimes, what he takes is one particular thing. <laughs> what I'm teaching you is what I have grace. In fact, this is one of the strongest grace I have to bring men into the ordination by teaching, by showing them right pattern. I took many years to besiege heaven and ask them, how is it that people stay in churches, stay around God for 3, 5, 10 years, 15 years, they did not become anything close to what God has ordained for them. Are you getting the point? God now started telling me, stage after stage, where they missed it. God cannot use you the way you are, my friend. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Guess what? Guess what? His work will be going on. Just that you will not participate in it. Are you getting the point? You did not get the point. Just that you will not participate, but his agenda will be going on. Where are you in God's agenda now? Get the off. So sometimes people don't know why we pray like this. They think eh, uh, uh, some people say eh, <laughs> that you, you, you can pray and you know prayer is given to this kind of people. It's not prayer is not given in quotes. There is nothing like prayer given to some people. It's selection. Brothers and sisters, it's election that God is doing. What it will take to execute God's purposes in this time is much priesthood. Much, not normal. Are you getting the point? Oh, so when you are praying like this, you will not know until a season will come, and you will not notice that God is God wants to do something in the whole world, and He chose 70% of us. Why is He choosing only us? Are we the only people? It is because people gave themselves to the requirement it takes to be elected into the purposes of God. If you don't understand this thing, if you don't put yourself, there is no reason why you are alive. This thing I'm teaching you is why you are alive. Because um, even if you are anointed, one day you will anointed people has committed suicide i hope you know gifted people has committed suicide because after some time they wonder this my talent and gift has only brought me sorrow why am i alive they now kill themselves do you know why they have not realized this place we are one day you ask yourself why are we still praying why are we still fasting you have not understood what i'm saying hmm? and it's not surprised that you are where you are I'm about to start praying and fasting very soon. The one that if I want to die, let me die. Because I've found out I've, I've seen something. Hmm? I've seen something. The problem is that our generation have started camping. If you are hearing my voice today, you are blessed. And the blessing will manifest when you obey. The problem is that you can hear with your ear, but you have no head with an ear. And your judgment will be higher. 
Because what they will say is, Woe unto you, high and side. Korazi. If what was taught to you, what you experience, if people in South Africa touch the kind of prayer power you touched, are you hearing what I'm saying? They would have made mighty, they would have. There is somebody in South Africa asking God for half of the prayer power you have. And it will cause revival there. But you, after doing prayer for some time, you say, ah, oh boy, I don't pray, oh, make I do other things. I see prayer is you pray and do other No. Other things are resting on prayer. Other things are valuable and useful to God because they are resting on prayer. When you stop praying, generating incense, what happens is that you are still doing something. But that thing cannot accord glory to God. Hmm? It takes a lot of incense to put what you are doing in such a state that it can bring glory. At the end, God will say, ah, through your life, I have been able to achieve my purpose. God can allow you to have money, have many things. That is not interested in that. There is something in your life that is interested in. And all those amenities and resources is to make for the realization of that purpose that is traveling through your life. And many times the reason why God withholds some things for us in certain seasons of our life is to bring us to the point where we realize this singular purpose eh? and make it supreme in such a way that even if our even if your condition changes eh? if 100 million enter like this my guy There is the kind of money you have. One billion, two, three. Ah. You want your brother? Uh -huh. So he has, we understand this thing. When the general car, ah, you be bring out your hand. Hold one, hold one. This thing they sweet your people like that. <laughs> if they sweet them. Guess what? They did not see you when when things when nothing has come up. Now they have realized you are our brother. Say after me, you are our brother. You are our son. Not your son, anything. Our guy don't know you. I don't know you. Village meeting that. They excommunicated your father because he's poor. Now that small thing is opening for you, they told you to come and be the chairman of your youth. Hmm? It's not because they love you, it's because you have started touching something. And you, Mumu, you. Let me stop. I have a body. And once somebody like that steps out and begins to think that that thing he has 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 something of his own to, that it is something money is not something on his own anointing is not something on his own there is a purpose so after me purpose Mo, marriage is not something on his own that's why you can't marry anybody okay you say i love him i marry him you are a fool because it, marriage is if if i don't marry you know, I've been restricting myself from preaching this kind of message. They say that I've been stopping myself this period. But let me tell you, marriage is not your destiny, my friend. Forget. Marriage is not your destiny. Marriage is not your destiny. Anything that is not helping your purpose, trash it. You marry, your calling died. You made mistake, my friend. Your calling should increase. You marry, you are rich, you became poor. Something is wrong. Go and trash it. Go back to priesthood. When we say priesthood, people are looking for, for quick solution. Is that quick solution you are looking for that brought your life like this? Stay one place. Pray for six hours. Do it for 21 days. Stop, stop messing up your life. 
things will start moving. Who is that devil? They have not born him, my friend. They will say fire is too much. Try it. Satan has not begged you before. He has not begged you. He has begged me many times. Don't say anything off your phone. I'm not saying you. I'm suggesting. And I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to a sister here. Stop complaining. Lock yourself in the room. Six hours in the night or in the day. If you are walking in the night, you won't die. Once it's not, once it's, make sure you eat by seven so that you won't be tired. All these people eating by 10, 11. That's why you can't do night vigil. You are not a magician. Are you hearing me? Oh? Okay, you are not hearing me. Except you are in Sabo because there is a civ different civilization. <laughs> that one is different. That one is a uh, survival mode. If you like, don't eat. Now, if you eat by seven, you will be fit. Stop chatting. By eight, there is nothing cut off from some discussion. Start from eight and start praying. Be the reason why you are starting from eight is because you have business. Start from nine. Fire it from nine till one in the night or two in the night. Do it every day. Four hours. Three, four. Don't do less than three. Three, four, five, six. Daddy, Baba, Baba, Shai, Akao, Kako, Kako, Kako. You will not do it up to seven days. Eh? Things will start shaking. Some people will become your enemy. I'll tell you the truth in order. Line up. Some people will stop greeting you. Huh? Do you need them? Pack all of them inside fire. Shake, shake, shake into the fire. That's what you do to those stuff. What's your own? See, you don't know your friend, you don't know your enemy, you don't know many things. You don't even know whether you are your own enemy. There is a way you will pray, you find out that you are your own enemy. You are the one stopping yourself. But you will not know. Priesthood, six hours. I'm telling you what I did for eight months. And after eight months, God now said, what stopped your father will not stop you. I said, ah, did anything stop my father? I did not know that something stopped my father. <laughs> Meanwhile, my father he was still alive that time. And he's doing well. He's praying for people. Miracles are happening. Things are happening for people. But you know they happen for us. I said, I didn't know something happened to my father. They said, you have not traveled to that point. Satan is hoping that you are not determined enough. You are not hearing me. Satan, no the doubt, you are doing something, but he is hoping. He is hoping, eh? You don't know how the shape of the realm of... He is hoping that this thing you are doing, that you will give up, you will be tired after. He is hoping you won't go deep enough to touch. Once you start touching the places that matter, I, everywhere we start scattering. Everywhere. Even your friends will become your... Everywhere we start shaking. Your mother that used to give you transport money to come for program. We say, ah, program on Kanika Google. How many of you, your brother, something like that has happened to you? Fight, we break out. Fight, we break out. You have to see beyond that. See beyond the person and see that you have started agitating Satan. Show me my scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 20. From verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder. Which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his what? Pay attention to this scripture. Every single thing we are reading here is what? Important. He said that this man is an householder. Hmm? Went out in the morning to do what? Hire what? Householder. Hire. Laborers. Into his what? Okay? Continue. 
And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Uh -huh. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into what? And whatsoever is right, are we what? And they went their way. Verse 5. And he went about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. So, how many times now? Say four times. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, O oh God, why stand ye here all the day idle? O oh God. His job. Hmm? Even in this ministry, there is vacancy everywhere. Do you know why you need to be cooking yourself, getting ready, so that if the main person mistake, me, me, there are many things some people are carrying that are not the first person that God called. The first person has not died; he's still alive. He is somewhere suffering for his misbehaviors suffering for her misbehavior is not the first it's just that the person that finally became it was busy preparing himself preparing himself meanwhile there were times God was putting him prepare do something stay in some place you refused then when the time passed you now appear and say my father my father is there no two blessings he's the only one blessing you have it's not about blessing, it's about an office. It's about an agenda that is in the heart of God that can only be trapped by one man. Huh? So from that statement, the book of Romans was telling us so that the purpose of God will be fulfilled, one was made subject to another. It's not because his purpose that determines, I will show you, Purpose determines election. Purpose what? Determines election. Watch. Let me see verse 7 quickly. They said unto him, Because no man had what? Hired us. Uh, people say, I'm not gifted. I know Sabi pray too much. I know Sabi Bible. I know you are missing the point. Keep let's let me be using the um, religious um, or rather the ministry dimension. This thing applies everywhere. Keep, keep reading Bible. They have never called you to preach or do anything. There are many qualified. Keep reading that Bible. Read it first time. Read it. By the time you read it number 20 times. Huh? The first person that God called and told him your emphasis this season is Bible. And the person is doing another thing. One day, an occasion will appear where that, that person is supposed to manifest the proceeds that would, should have come out of his life if he, he did the instruction of God eh, in giving himself to Bible studies for long and he will mess up. Then we we'll go and say, Hey, 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 we, what, who shall we send? Who will go for us? Stop tell me, who shall we send? Who will go for us? And one angel will say, Um, there's one guy. It's just that we have known we have not given him anything, but he has read Bible 20 times. Meanwhile, the minimum requirement is 10 times. You have done 20. You are not in the number. They said, let's try him. Wear him the garments. Remove all those dirty clothes from him. And then you appear. Once they wear you garment, you become beautiful. Yes. The same people that used to think you are nothing is because the thing has not come. When you come, when God puts hands on your life, you are desirable. That's how this life is. It doesn't matter how you are. What is important is for God to approve you. Once God approves you and puts his hand on your life and gives you resources to, 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 um, um, to, to support that new realm, new office and calling, you become desirable. The Bible said, when the hand of the Lord came upon Jesus, eh, the, the whole Judea and Jerusalem did what? Went after him. Why didn't it happen before it came? You don't know 
when it comes people will look at you like this and say we love you we don't know why it's not you it's, there is a beauty of God that shines forth from them. if you make the mistake to think you are the one and then you say ah um, you know people like us you are a fool it's the God they knew is that thing that God has removed and put something it draws men we will continue to prepare ourselves until that day arrives. Huh? Hmm. It doesn't matter who they will. If even your weakness will become strength on that day. Are you hearing me? You didn't hear me. There is a man that is involved in baseball. I think. How many of you have heard of him? His name is Babe Ruth. How many of you have heard of Babe Ruth? I need students here. Who has ever heard of Bebrut? You have read it anywhere. Who? Uh -huh. You know, he doesn't have, I think, one of these fingers. You know, there is a way they do baseball. I think there is a way some of them throw. I've forgotten how it's an American stuff. The guy missed one finger and is a disadvantage in the natural. Huh? guess what he became the best because there are different positions he became the best in it why because something came on him and that disadvantage became actually the advantage when God comes on you huh? people, will, people will begin to huh? I know a man hmm? his bad head that is doing him is a man of God and his head was going like this. You can even know the man. Huh? He's entering. A, guess what? People that have hair began to bab it. How many of you have seen that man? I did not call him. But the man. Hmm? Begin to bab it. The man is gifted in word of knowledge. His, his bad head that is doing him. Everybody began to bab bad head. Why? When something comes on you, people will say, ah, it be like the secret is. Everybody will start babbing it. I'm telling you, the things that is, that are, should have been disadvantages in your life, it will become desirable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, because no man hired us, he said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye what? Receive. Verse 8. So when even, evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, call the laborers, and give them their what? Beginning from what? Follow me. And give them their hire, beginning from what? Unto? Please, follow me. And give them their hire. Beginning from what? Yes. Unto? Yes. Hold this scripture. Hold it. You will see very soon why you should hold it. Verse 9. And when they came that we are hired about the 11th hour, they received every man what? You are not getting the point. The people that started from the first hour and the people that started in the 11th hour were paid what? The same thing. I'm telling you. But some people, you can even be in literal sense, you can be in revival hub, and somebody will be saying, uh, there are people that we have stayed here for long. Eh? That these people came you, you, you don't understand divine mechanism. What God promised you when you started was a penny. The person that came now, you also promised the person what? A penny. So don't come and say, I have stayed long. That's not how God judges. God judges based on agreement. What he said he will pay is what? The question is, did he pay you a penny? You will see now. But when the first came, look, let's read it together. Everybody, let's read it. One, two, ready, go. Uh huh. Uh huh. Did you see what is happening here? 
He said, the force came and said, why are we collecting one penny like the guys that came now? Meanwhile, what he agreed with the person that owns the vineyard is what? That's what you agreed when you started. Then, the 11th hour person came and agreed how many? One penny. So, when the master now came and paid everybody one penny, the people that started for said, ah, ah, we have been in ministry for 30 years. We have been for 20 years. It's not 30, 20. It's the one that got it correct. It's not 30, 20. 30, 20 is irrelevant to God. Huh? <laughs> when you do the job, you will be paid one penny. One penny is the payment. I'm showing you something so that you will not stay in the body of Christ and think that just because you are staying translates to anything. Eh? You have to be a custodian of keys. It is the keys that you are a custodian of that makes you to master systems of your life. Eh? When you see a man that has a lot of keys, the person has, has received the capacity to master systems. If there is something I believe God has given me grace in, is the grace to master seasons of your life. Because you are just a pawn. God is the one that is orchestrating things from eternity. Your job is to master what he is doing. Eh? And align properly where you should, should be. Pay the requisite price to be able to trap what it takes to execute the demands of several seasons. What? But the first suppose because they came first. Should I tell you? Even Paul that started before us is one penny that they will be paid in the context of final, final analysis. It's the same thing. Because there is a way you look at it. I know some of you, some of the time I've said it, we even use it to motivate and inspire and say, St. Francis of Assisi these men did not speak in tongues but if you see the way that God used them and all that, how can we stand with them in the judgment seat of Christ oh God, it's still one penny it's one penny for you, are you hearing me if you will stand now and execute properly what God has ordained for you doesn't matter whether we are the last generation it's still one penny what God is demanding from you is not when we started. It's whether you were able to execute in your time and season. But meanwhile, there are people in this time that they will not be paid anything. Because they didn't see, they didn't hear. You don't know what I'm handing to you. Huh? I know I will be a patriarch. Not because I was born in the time of Abraham. I have seen it in the spirit. I live my life to prepare <laughs> to prepare for that day. I'm not a man of earth. I'm not motivated by things of it. I have made a lot of decisions and choices. And even throughout this weekend, I'm praying to God, show me, show me, and give me grace to pay the next price. Huh? to go to the cross and die again so that when the agenda of God is traveling through my life what I have previously will not hinder the one that is coming because Peter I will still show you these things the price of divine there are many many huh? what hindered Peter from the next move was the former move because when the next move the move to the Gentiles appeared he said not so Lord not so he was not able to submit to the dealings that this season demanded. And God cannot do more. He didn't say, the person is still in ministry, but he is not included. He is not elected into the new season. Transition has waved that person away. Transition has made him obsolete. Transition. So, you see, for somebody like Peter, he has grown in rank so much that God cannot stop making use of him. So they now measure this ministry. So after me measured. So his ministry is measured. Meanwhile, God wanted Peter to have a global ministry. 
When Jesus said, start from Judea, Jerusalem, and uttermost part of the earth, was Peter not the person that is the chief of the people he sent? But his ministry ended with Jews and Jerusalem. Because when God appeared to him through the angel in the book of Acts chapter 10, he said, kill and eat, Peter. He said, not so, Lord. Say after me, not so, Lord. The reason why many people missed it is because they are crying, not so, Lord. Not so. Huh? Some of them will say, how can I now start afresh now? I have gone too far in this direction. I have gone too far in this one. How can I submit to training, to be trained this way again? I have gone too far. Huh? It's not so, Lord. And another season have appeared before us. Many men will be carried away by the transition season. Because transition elevates some and carries some away. May you not be gathered out like the chaffs. Eh? Because another transition season have come. Seas are vacant in the spirit. And God is putting in his hands on men. And what he's trying to do is to bring us to the point where we are prepared where we have the required competence because he's the one sitting he's just one and what motivates him is his purposes so even though he wants to use you and he desires to use you and the proof that he desires the proof of his mercy the proof of his grace is that you have already been called eh? as i will yet show you if you are hearing me now if you are praying you are born again you are called The Bible said we are called. We are um, redeemed and called with a high calling. Everybody that is born again has a calling. You have what? But there is another point. Verse 11. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. <laughs> Verse 12. Saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou has made them equal to us. <laughs> See, God is a mysterious. There is nothing new under the sun. If you if you will settle down and read the Bible, your question will be answered. In fact, in my own opinion, some of the things you are making praying and fasting to know wisdom direction is already in the Bible. If you will see that one, read the Bible, you will see it. In my own opinion, there is nobody that is a good Bible student that is not wise. If you study the Bible well, you are wise. I hope you know. Even if you are not wise in yourself, you are just reading Bible and doing it. The way your life will be turning out, will be seeming as if you are wise. And then, people that are wise, that is living against the scripture, their life will be turning out as foolishness. Watch. This last have wrought one hour, and thou hast made them equal to us, which have, have borne which have borne the burden and heat of the day. Let's see verse 13. I hope I will get to where I'm going. But he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee no wrong. This thou not this thou this not thou agree with me for what? Let me tell you what is happening here. Can you hear me? Hmm? There is a position that is vacant, but God did not tell them. Huh? Listen. He just called all of them to labor. So after me, called them to labor. Meanwhile, the labor is not the end. And if God calls you to a labor, he will tell you, I will reward you. I will make you prosperous. I will give you. And anybody he calls, he gives every believer and every laborer the same general promise. Are you getting the point? But amongst those people, eh, there are certain offices he will now elect a few of them to. Meanwhile, he elects them on the basis of um, the price that they have been paid, they have paid to become competent. So when God calls, He is doing two things. One, He is trying to bring your life to the point where it is desirable. You have money, marry your 
you are settled. Are you with me? But beyond that, there is another one, the election. So for everybody that followed God duly, can you hear me? That person, each and every one of them has a reward called one penny. Serve me one penny. God will not deny you your one penny. Included in one penny is your healing. Included in one penny is your prosperity. Included in one penny is your marriage. Included in one penny is one or two things about making you comfortable in this life. Huh? So everybody that followed God well has what? One penny. But there is something higher than one penny. That thing higher than one penny is that as God has promised everybody one penny, there is one he doesn't promise. That one is determined. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's determined by as all of us are going towards one penny, somebody saw beyond one penny. Eh? And he's giving himself to the regime. Giving himself to training. So after God has paid one penny, he said, uh -huh, I've paid all of you. Hmm? Now, that time that people are laboring for one penny, God is electing one or two according to many things that is required. Eh? I will show you by the mercies of God at least 9 to 12 things that is the price a man should pay to be elected by the purpose. And once you are elected, hmm? Hmm. everything about your life will change. Once you are elected, everything will be funneled through your life and your office until you finish serving your tenure. Until you finish serving your term, there cannot be two like you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Until you finish serving your tenure, there can't be two like you. And that's how God does it. Meanwhile, He will not, there is no name. What He has, let me show you what I mean. Let's see verse 14. Take that. Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Verse 15. Read it again. Uh huh. Read it the third time. You have not read it well. I'm not too interested in the last shall be the first and first shall be the last. I'm interested in what? Let's read the second the phrase. The second phrase. One, two, ready, go. See, the calling is by grace. When God wants to call, he calls 1,000 people. 20. Huh? But in the chosen, there is a price. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Calling free. Chosen price. There is a price to be elected. Turn to your neighbor say, there is a price. What we call fasting and prayer, the price for the calling of God, the price for, is actually the price for election. Huh? Once the person sees that God will not change his mind. If you want to pray, he will tell you pray for the person. If somebody is there, huh? and you say, ah, but this person is not suitable. We don't like. He will tell you pray for the person until his turn of finishes. That's why even in physical election in Nigeria and whatever, eh? anything we want to do, sometimes God will be making sure we are doing it before the next election. 
Once the person wins election and sits on the seat, do you know the demand of the scripture? Pray for them. I hope you know. It's pray for them. That's why you have to labor before time. There are many requirements. There are many prizes you pay. There, there, is the, there is the one we call time test. The test of faithfulness. Test of faithfulness. Huh? Sometimes years and months of your life, you will not hear anything. Nothing will look like as if you are part of the people that God is calling. I'm telling you. You will not look like it. There are people that look like it from when you are small. The guy is already carrying Bible, doing even preaching. Only for you to reach 25 and the guy became a Yahoo boy. Eh? You that doesn't look like it, doesn't behave like it, doesn't... When it was time for the thing to... You are just loving God, doing all the things, doing your coding, doing your... Until one day, you are just on your own. And then one person with cripple enter and is in excruciating pain. It's not as if you want to pray for the person who it's not as if you want to pray for the person. It's just that you felt compassion. How can this person be suffering? Say, hey, if I pray now. But uh, Apostle Edu said that we should pray. God, it's not me. I'm just trying to obey him. Say, in the name of Jesus, Father, I'm asking you. I know. And the person, if you want to pray long prayer. <laughs> it has happened to me. You are planning to pray so that you so if you are praying long, you will use it and you know, appease your heart that you did something. Once you have started praying, the person start walking and shouting that I'm healed. Even you, self, that is praying, uh, will be shocked. Everybody is shocked, including the person that prayed. They will say, man of God, pastor. You, you will be looking at yourself. What is happening? What is happening? You go back home and throughout the night, a cloud, like a mist. I said, that's what happened to me. I finished and went to a prayer meeting. And then, I held hands with people like this. All of them fell. Me, I wanted to fall my own. And Joshua, I said, ah, why is God like this? All the time, people are falling in meeting. Why is it that me, I never fall? Huh? They got up, we held hands. They fell again. I wanted to fall. It was at the third time that I said, it's possible this thing is coming from me. I went back home. I wanted to sleep. When I slept that night, I felt as if a cloud was over me. Hi! I said, see, when you are there, you will know. You are not there yet. <laughs> stop, stop saying, stop, stop uh, hoping that you are anointed, you are called, the thing is working. No, you are, is, you are doing guest work. When is there? Huh? You will know. Have you not seen how your life is now? You have noticed that you we are not there before. That thing you think is nothing. Is now. There is the thing rested like a mist, like a cloud. Those days I will lay down in the room. A cloud will come and overshadow me and stay there for hours. I will stay there. Quietly. I will stay. Meanwhile, if I come out, there is no manifestation. <laughs> <laughs> those days are the test of faithfulness young men doesn't, young men that are caught into ministry they don't know that once more give once more that they will come and be sharing on Facebook the encounter there if we share our encounter huh? many of you will be misled that's why some of us intentionally we live we do some things so that you know we are human beings have you not noticed that Jesus presented his humanity when he's on earth, more than his date. Go and check. See, they call him the son of God. Eh? But anytime he addresses himself, he addresses himself as what? Son of man. Meaning that he's more interested. You, you are interested. <laughs> Some people said that Jesus became man so that men can become God. See, you are more interested in becoming. Some people, they come and say, this lady is an angel. After me, this lady is an angel. It is not, it is not an advantage. They did not promote you. 
if we look at the matter, you are not promoted. Angels are asking, what is man? You, you are saying, you are an angel. Hi, an angel. This one is an angel. You are missing the point. Angels are saying, what is man? When we gather, there is a kind of services we hold in this place. Angels will come and join our service. Because they have not seen that this, they are not allowed into this kind of experience. You know the fellowship you have with God as father. Angels don't relate with God on that basis. They relate with God, but not on that basis. God within you. We say, my father, and we feel it inside you. Mm -mm. So what you have is what angels want to have. In fact, the Bible said it. There are some angels want to, want to see this thing. They want to understand it. And which is the very purpose of the body of Christ. When we stay upon the face of the earth, according to the book of Ephesians, he said, unto the principalities and powers that will be made manif manifest, the manifold what? Wisdom of God. Back to our teaching. He said, many are called, but another word we will use there is, many are called, but few are elected. <laughs> you know, when we read something like this, people will say, well, God is the one that called, God is the one that put pe people in position. And so they leave a lot of responsibility to God. See, when you hear election, what comes to your mind? Is it not politics? Are you, not, are you with me? When you hear election, the next thing that comes to your mind is what? Brothers and sisters, there is politics in election. Whether it's seven or eight. Huh? We have had visions where hmm, the year that the Mim Shark started manifesting on my life, I know. It was the year 2019. It's not been long. It don't, you don't need to be long. It doesn't need to be long. And that, that thing is not is not by luck. When the meme shark comes, if the meme shark is not the, if you manipulate yourself, it will show. An aspect of your life and destiny will suffer for it. That is if it works. Many times, you will, somebody came and, <laughs> somebody came and told me that he sang a song and he went to all the music blogs and bought space. Did all kinds of things, radio. Say, man of God, do you know what happened? My song has not yet sold. Huh? Meanwhile, meanwhile, Theophilus Sunday doesn't have any social media. Uh, all those social media things you are seeing is not his own. His people managing it for him. It's not in anyone. He will now stay in a room. His room or parlor or church or anywhere. Huh? On the bed. He will be on the bed and say, no glory in this world. God. And then Buddha will collect it and listen to it. Wonder. You don't know what is happening to you. As I'm talking to you now, if I continue talking, you will listen to me till night. You will not stop. But if I give you mic, you will share, 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 share. After one hour, even you will not like to listen to yourself. Come and take the mic. <laughs> People will remember that it's late. I hope you know it's getting late. But you are not aware. Because you don't know if you live here, God will finally say what you need. If you like, leave now. There are people that have left here and I know God was telling me, hey, this thing you are saying is for this person. And they now left. I almost stopped one man last week. I left the man. Huh? Don't worry. You leave now. I'm still here. You come next week. Next year. I will still preach this message next year. And it's because of you. I went to a meeting of a popular apostle three good times. And each time I went to his meeting, 
he preached the same thing. I like, I kid you not, the same message. Three times I went to his meeting. I met him in UNN. Huh? The first time in 2017. He preached four dimensions of encounter. I met him two years later in, in UNN. He still preached four dimensions of encounter. I met we, in Makodi, he came. He still preached that thing. And the second day I came, he preached four dimensions of encounter. Three times I met him. Three times. Is it coincidence? Don't worry. Next year, I will still, if you leave, I will still preach the same thing next year. And it's because God actually wants to show you mercy. He can follow you and be preaching the same thing for you for 10 years until you hear. So, some of the things people call dealing and processes is disobedience. They converted it to God is a God. Is your disobedience and you are obstinate. You are hard. Yes. And because of that, all of them will convert. We say God is dealing with me. God, will, oh God, it's many mistakes you are making. Wrong choices. Wrong decisions. Powered by many things. Tradition. Ambition. Many things has brought you in a place and you are passing through and you say God is not dealing. So you see other people moving faster and you say no, my own is my dealing. No, it's not your dealing. It's your disobedience. Many pastors that are suffering is cumulative effect of disobeying simple instructions from God. That has brought them to the place where what should have taken them three years is taking them ten years. And they are blaming it, blaming it on God. And when they see people that have bound their soul to obeying God. And their life is moving at the pace of divine election. They will say that uh, maybe these people, they are lucky. One said it's because I'm connected to Apostle Romeo. As if I'm the only one. Do you know how many we are? We, you can't count them all. Are you hearing me? You can't count them. There are people that have started following him 10 years before I knew he is existing. I'm not saying they are bad, but many of them, they have not tapped. If he, are you getting the point? If he is on that basis, any way you want to count it, eh? I'm not close, but I know one thing. There is a price for election. It doesn't matter whether Benny Hinn lays hand on you. It doesn't translate to anything. If you don't know the price to pay. Some people come and meet me and say, Man of God, I saw where you laid hands on me, laid leg on me, laid nyash on me. My life has changed. Nothing, nothing comes out of that. Some of them tell me, uh, they will, they, some of them will be telling me they will want and uh, they want me to now call them and say, Oh my god, there is nobody like you on earth. You are the one the whole world is waiting for. So this apostle, the one counted for apostles and hundred, whatever, and big men of God. He said, uh, um, last time Omar entered and gave me something. The other one, this person, you are a fool, oh, continue talking. When the person will finish, I say, well done, bro. Join, check. If you are listening to me, check my last response. Some of you, I didn't even respond to you because you are not wise. You are a foolish man. It's not a bad, it's election. That one, if it's true, it's just God is telling you, I don't call you, oh, I don't call you, oh. Guess what? There is a thousand men in my own counting. I don't know about other big men of God. My own, the people that have approached me, there are hundreds running into thousands that is saying the same thing you are saying. Forget about that. Find out what it takes to be elected. Many are called. How many are chosen? There are no men. There are no men. There are no men. The same mistake is about to happen again. And that's why God put an alarm in my mouth. What I'm teaching you is not a teaching. It's an alarm to a generation. Huh? And every sincere heart that hears me, something will pull you and a wisdom will come upon your life. Huh? The Bible said, we have the anointing and it teaches us. That anointing, that is if you are sincere and willing. That anointing will teach you where you have missed it. How to realign yourselves. Many are called, few are chosen. Huh? I can't miss it. Hmm? Manipulate my days. 
knock me into alignment. Sometimes when God brings you to revival hope, it means that the reason why the last person failed in the assignment is that it takes a truckload of incense. Huh? Equivalent of 100,000 100, hours of man, pray, man hours of prayer. That's what it takes to begin to step into your destiny. Huh? There are seven people that have attempted it and it's not as if God did not call them. But they did not measure up to the required quota along the line. Satan made the mess of them. Satan will so deal with them that anybody that wants to do it will be afraid. Huh? They will call you and tell you that your mother like church. That is prayer that made her like this. On Agwabo, have they not told some of you that the reason why they are afraid for you, the way you are following Jesus like this, that look at this woman, that's how her life is. So you be careful, just be in the middle. Huh? The problem with those people is that they, it's not as if they didn't try, but they did not hit the quota. Bind my soul to the cross. Let me die there. Let a new man emerge out of the arches. <laughs> Many are called, few are choosing. People are roaming everywhere. If you go to Facebook, too many people talking. I'm tired of hearing them. Everybody, their own opinion. Check them in the spirit. They are chaff. Nobody has weight. Some of them think what we do is by luck. Until the day God gives you to do half of what we are doing. Huh? Some of them hear what I say about me. They will think, ah, is this possible? They will know I'm sharing half of the story. Less than half of the story. Huh? Many people come to Sabo here. They couldn't survive. They ran away. Is it not true? Many people have come. Many ladies. Many guys. They could not survive it. They escaped. Because it's too hard. That's the vision I saw. If it's easy, everybody will do it. Meanwhile, many people are called. Go and do this. But as the days are coming, they became comfortable. Many of them, is not, it's not the labor that made them comfortable. It's the ease that God gave them. Because there is a way you labor. God will try to make your life easier so that you will be able to de um, deliver on the assignment. The ease, the one million they gave you. Huh? If they haven't given you money, you would have made more progress. So God now said, eh, eh. So, eh, so, when we reduce money in Elijah's hand, he will pray more. Have you not noticed? If money reduces, you pray more. Mm. May you not be like that. Prayer is my calling. Bible is my calling. Fasting is my calling. It's not something I'm using. I'm not using you, God. I'm not using you. I don't want to use it. I want to fulfill my calling. Oh. Did he read the I'm not using you. Many people are using God. They are fasting and praying. And what is deep within their heart is to use God to get to where they are going. They are looking for the anointing, looking for connection. That's why when you see them, when you see what is happening in the body of Christ, young men, what they are doing is just connection to get to the next one. It's not connection that elects men in the spirit. The position you put yourself and say you are one of them, you are not one of them. It's a spiritual office. It takes a coronation in heaven. And the day men are coronated, the first question they will ask, are you worthy? Something that a man miss up to. So if you are wise, you should give yourself to the politicking of the spirit. To the demands that it takes for men to measure up to competence. And when that day arrives, amongst many that are called, a few of you will be chosen. And then the crown and scepter will be handed over to you. From that day, ah, you will become a different man. You will become a new son in the territory. The reason why Satan has ravaged our land is because sons are not there. And sons are men that have stepped into the place the place of their placement. There are four major definitions I need to give you for you to understand this, my teaching. Eh? Because of time, I might not be able to do it. 
But one of them is this. That one of them is what is called adoption. Ah? Hi, should I do it? Let me try. Hi. Let me take it easy. Let me not preach. Let me be teaching. Let me see again Matthew chapter 22 verse 8. I have a body. Are you called? If you are called, are you chosen? Have you paid the price? Have you paid the price? Do you know what it takes? Satan is hoping that you stop where others stopped. So that what swallows people is what I call to swallow you. Satan is hoping you don't lay hold on a new tranche of wisdom. So that you become as foolish as your fathers. I'm sorry, I celebrate you. I celebrate them in the name of Jesus. But, see, let's be factual. Eh? They, didn't, they didn't do well. Hmm? If you have not told yourself that truth within your heart, you will not make the right choices. You, you are not hearing me. Hmm? Hmm. If you have not told yourself the truth that they made a mistake, that they didn't get it right, you will bind yourself to that mistake. You don't know how God works. You are not wise yet. You. No way. Meanwhile, you think you are. I'm telling you because I've seen you, I've seen you in this. So, my plan is to allow you in foolishness for five years. Then you'll be very, very humble when you return in five years' time. And I will do it. When you return in five years' time, you'll be very humble. Humility is not this thing. Humility is inside the heart. It, the way you think in your heart. The way you think. It's not there yet. Should I continue? Let me leave it. So let me leave the remaining thing I want to say. Huh? I have to acknowledge that my father missed it. I used to doubt it until I prayed for eight months and I had an encounter. And the man told me well, where my father failed, I will not fail. What does he mean? What does he mean, oh? Does he mean you should become his enemy? No. It means that if you want to make it, you cannot follow what he's doing. Because something in what he's doing made it to fail. Made it to fail. And if you follow, you will fail. Calling, confirm. The calling, eh? In your lineage, there is calling. But the execution was faulty in your father's home. And that's why he ended up like that. That means, even if the calling is the same, in the execution of your own calling, you have to do it another way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No. Because if you do it the same way, you will have the same result. And then, the problem with this thing is that there is a way that cement right. Huh? In the, uh, there is a way that cement right. Do you know the problem with that way? Is at the end you find out. If you find out from the beginning, just you will change. Is it not true? Quickly you escape. The problem is that you find out at the end that the way you took. I feel an anointing on my head. And I know what that thing means. That's the guiding light that has led me for 11 years. You don't, some people don't even know my strength. My strength is not what they think.
my strength is that I made I make minimal mistakes. It's not as if I don't make I'm still human. It's not as if I don't make I make minimal mistakes. Very minimal. Very minimal. Do you know what reduces mistakes in the life of a man? You see, mistakes are are consequences of action and choices. Huh? And what sponsors choices and decision is what? What sponsors choices and decision? I don't have time. Cancer. It's after me, cancer. What sponsors cancer? Wisdom. Hmm? Meanwhile, whether it's cancer or wisdom, what makes it to flow from a pure fountain is the fear of the Lord. So you can measure how really you are in tune with the correct counsel of God by the measure of his, his fear that is in your heart. The real wisdom of God is not knowledge. It is the fear of the Lord. That is the beginning of wisdom. Eh? Do you know what it will impart to you? First thing it will do is that it will make you not to take any decision, not to do anything if you have not been able to secure God's position. Is it not true? What is that thing called? Is it not fear? You have not secured, you have not understood God's opinion about this thing and you are doing it. That means you don't fear God. And that kind of person, God will allow you in your way until you are almost dead or Satan has almost obliterated your time. Eh? When you are about quarter to go, you will now cry and say, God help me. He will say, who even told you to start in the first place? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many are called, but few are elected. What I'm trying to show you is, is how to do divine politics. How to do what? Divine politics. There is politics. I want all of you to become politicians. Huh? You know, the prayer I prayed almost 10 years ago, those days it doesn't look like it and I I don't have access some people have the access knew how to meet men of God and all that I cannot I have not I have not met any big man of God in my life except for my father in the Lord I don't know any other big man of God I've met. but you people have met big, big men of God you might you have traveled everywhere meeting big men of God no be so look at your life if it's by that oh God, before the principality now me I didn't have opportunity of big men of God I made do with their books their tapes and their videos it's enough for me and I've contacted more than people that went there physically I told God one time I don't know where and how and when and who that you will use for this end time work. But I know that wherever and however and whoever that I will be there, that I will be among. I prayed that prayer with fasting for long, for years. Make sure I'm there. Make sure I'm there. Make sure I'm there. Make sure I'm there. Many are called for your choosing. Many are called for your choosing. Many are called for your choosing. See how all of us, we are plenty now. And you are hearing me. Some of you don't know that this thing I'm telling you is implicating your life. Season will pass. Another season will pass. As I went to Lagos one day and my uncle's wife that I was staying with met their pastor that time. Came and he, the man was behaving like Benny Hinn. He was waving his suit. Me, I was sitting one side. I, was, I wasn't talking. I was watching like this. I said, what is this? Was those days... When was even that time? I'm not sure I've laid hand on somebody and he fell down. The person I got filled with the Holy Ghost, he stayed there for one hour, 30 minutes. I still met the sister in Lagos and she's still speaking in tongues. I say hallelujah. Uh, my prayer was, I was, I was praying, I was sweating. Hi! I wanted to give up. I, something was telling me, if you give up today, uh, you will, I, thank God I didn't too, because I wouldn't have generated the faith again for the next one year. How many people have you gotten filled with the Holy Ghost? Huh? 
nossos. How many have you gotten filled with Holy Ghost? I'm not a serious person. <laughs> a guy shouted me recently on Telegram. He said that he came for 24 hours and I looked at him and said, oh God, look at the way you are not serious. You are tired for me. You are not serious. The guy got angry. He said he now went back to prove a point to me that he is serious. I would like to meet that guy physically anyway because he responded to it well. Eh? Now he can now be my friend. But that time, he said, when I told him, he now went back and started praying for four hours, fasting and praying so that he will prove me wrong. Say, prove me wrong. If I say something that you don't like, it's open to you. You can prove me wrong. If, it's, if you feel I'm wrong, prove me wrong. So the guy behaved well. And he proved me wrong. So he said, look at what he said. He said he was on the way to prove me wrong. Until after many days, he now picked one of my messages. He said he endued with power or something. When he listened to it, something now entered his belly. He said, see me, I see something do like this. Boom, and entered his belly like this. He now started groaning grown for hours non-stop suddenly the power of God came on him I am I Skamai Fakubakai Kikakakumakai Huh? He now started listening to he has been listening, he now listened to me now and he's able to benefit see this thing I'm telling you it works so this is why I'm moving, it works because if they leave you, they will pamper you into obscurity. You will become, you will not be useful to our earth. They will just write your name. Um, oh God, who live and God should them died. God forbid. I, I, I will, I will kick you. I will kick you into it. If you don't like, if see, listen, if you don't like it, stop coming. You see all these new people that are coming. We, we don't beg people to come here. If you notice, the door is at the back. <laughs> what does he tell you? If if it's church that is looking for members, will the door be at the back? If the door is at the back, you will see ushers on the main road telling you welcome. They will carry banners and you won't see anybody. If I, if you are passing, you'll be checking whether it is this. The only way you know is if you climb the stairs, you will see energy. That's the way you will know. So if you are here, it means God wants you to be here. It's not you that brought yourself. It is not advert that brought you. We don't do advert. If you, even this one we put in front has... Somebody said I spoke Igbo. He didn't know I can speak Igbo. He didn't know that we are the pioneers before. <laughs> we carry it on our head. It's God that helped us. Hey! I used to correct my Igbo teacher in secondary school. My sisters are here. I have layers of Igbo novels. Not one. Not two. In my church from primary school, I'm the owner of Igbo Bible. When they call quotation, everybody will turn to my... Don't bother to open it. I'm the one. Don't bother to open because by the time you are... They have opened it. The only person that can read the whole Bible more than me is my father. His own is, is a gift. Is it because we are doing this, this one we are speaking now? Huh? We also know how to speak Igbo. And I was listening to some men of God now. I found out that some of them are not afraid of their language. I was listening to that man of God from South Africa. Do you know he adds his language many times? He adds Africans. 
Amen. Oh. Are you sure we'll finish this? Then said he to his servants, the wedding is what? I didn't hear you. The wedding is what? But they which we are bidding, we are not worthy. See, if you are intelligent in the scripture, pay attention to the words that are used. They are not what? That is meaning that there is a requirement for them. There are many things. So. God specifically told me that the man he is looking for eh, will not start ministry in Lagos. Meanwhile, me, I want to start ministry in Lagos. Before, let me admit, me and God, we fought that warfare for five years. Thank God he won. Should I pray for you? May God win the battle in Jesus' name. When you and God begin to contend on a matter in your life, let God win. Amen. The reason why your life is like this is because you have won many of them. You and God contended. And you what? You won. And because you won, your life is like this. May you stop winning from today. Amen. You know, they said that Jacob uh, is a man that uh, 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 wrestle with God and he won. You have not read it well. There is another place you read in the scripture. He didn't win. God won. In fact, what happened there is that for the first time, somebody won Jacob. They know they win Jacob. Nobody wins him. You think it's easy for him to do that thing he did to Esau? You just read the Bible. It looks easy. Pam, pam, pam in four, three, two to three verses. Is it not true? Two to three verses, they said he won. You missed the point. He took scheming. In my own opinion, he has been planning that thing since 10 years. He has been setting the guy up, setting him up, setting him up, set everybody up, set his mother up, set his father up. You think it's easy for Isaac to be deceived? That guy is an experienced man. He's a prophet. Abraham is a prophet. Isaac is a prophet. Jacob is a prophet. Huh? But... But Jacob is so deep in this thing that when he came, he said, that he's saying the voice is like Jacob. He said, that he, forget the voice, touch the body. <laughs> forget the voice, touch what? The body. When he touched the body, then ate the food. He said, ah, the smell of my son, like the field that the Lord has blessed. And then Jacob, Esau entered and said, Daddy, my own. See, the father, even the father was a little afraid that he has given it out because this is not the kind of thing you give to wise. What I'm teaching you in this teaching is not something that comes to wise. If you miss it, you have missed it. If you gained it, you have gained it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? May the Lord interpret it in your own position. Let me make it simple in the way you understand. Some of you here are supposed to marry great men of God, you ladies. Hmm? You have not realized why you must come here. Do you think you would have worked out marrying some of these brutal men if you didn't come here? Will it work? There is no way you will understand the kind of thing they are doing. There is no way you will understand the kind of demand on their life except you step here. Not possible. Is it possible? It's not. Meanwhile, you will not know. Huh? You will say God is the same everywhere. Mumu you. God is the same everywhere. Huh? And he's telling them to come up to the mountain. He's telling them to build temple for them. God is the same everywhere. God is not the same everywhere. Eh? Your life can customize God's oppression. The operative dimension of God can be customized by your life. Eh? So, God can be doing all, but for you, he will behave this way. He will walk this way because of how you have customized him. There is a way I will minister like this. 
you will find out it's not the same with your own pastor because me I've customized them in a particular way. If I'm talking, people will, I'm teaching you, people will be falling under power from their seats. It's an oppression that I have over my life. I'm not saying anybody for. I'll be teaching people will be having encounters. Eh? I will look at you and, and speak. You will be shaking. The power of God will come on you literally. Eh? I will be talking and standing in front of the people. The people I'm standing in front, all of them will be shaking under power. Some will fall, some will not fall. What is it? If you like, come and collect the mic. Come and do it. Huh? There is a way I will look at you and speak to you. In the night, you have an encounter because of it. You can't rest. Come and collect it. No, come on. <laughs> Do you know that thing is, is because you customize God so that as far as you are concerned, we don't know for others, but for you, he will operate this way. People like Paul will come to Philippians chapter 4. He said, My God shall supply all your need. Who's God? Peter's God. You are not getting the point. God's John, God's John's God, Philip's God, who's God? Paul. He said, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. He's his own God, he's leveraging on stature. Peter came to the book of Acts, chapter 3. He said, Look on us. After he said, Look on us, he came back and said, Such as I have. So when you are looking, look on who? On us. Because the man has to look on him and John. But when he wanted to administer something, he said, such as I have, not such as me and John have. Because he doesn't, John's own might be different from, he knows the one he has is for cripples. Hey! Cripples. Oh, ye crippled legs. I need people that will clear wishes. Wishes are everywhere. I saw a vision one time. Just a small, like a trance. And I saw. It's when I realized that some people have already done itself in the body of Christ. I saw trailers filled with witches of people that came to our meetings. They came. Eh? They now packed crutches. Witches. Neck braces. Hand braces. If you are sick here, you are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Many are called. How many are choosing? Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which we are bidding, we are not worthy. Next verse. Go ye therefore into the highways. What God is doing in these last days is highways. He's calling everybody. Huh? You know this demand, this prayer thing that has increased, all these things he is calling. The people he called have disappointed him. And there is no time. The job needs to be get, needs to be done. Huh? That's why God is putting his hands on people. Young men, he's not always like that in their number. Hoping that a few of them can abide huh? in the place of breaking, the query side long enough for them to become men that the hand of God has come in such a way that they are assigned to a generation. When people remember me, they come back slight. Me, I know it. That's where I'm going to. You are, you are, you are, you are dying. You are, Satan is about to collect you. Eh? You are about to fall into fornication. A lady, the lady has removed her clothes and you want to, and then your phone rang. And he said, I can't end like this. <laughs> if you see speed, with you will be delivered instantly. Try it. Try it. If you want to do something, just say, what will Papa say concerning this matter? You will know. It won't take time. Stop praying. God, what do you want me to do? Oh God, stop it. Just say, if Papa is, what will he do? You will know the answer fast. Huh? 
or a guy is telling you, I love you, you are the love of my life. Without you, I will die this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, as he's saying it, as he's rapping, 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 hmm? he's now mixing it with Bible quotation. You know, if you mix it with Bible quotation, there are people, these new guys that I'm seeing now, hey! They mix Bible quotation. They will miss it with Bible quotation. So you will be confused. It's in your Bible. They say foolish women that are not well trained. Such people, they follow them. Huh? When that one is happening, then God will now, you say, God, is this true or not? Then, um, thank God, probably your data is on. Maybe you are chatting with the person on WhatsApp, and then your data is on. My message will now come in. And I will say, Sister, where are you? <laughs> you will say, Papa, I'm in Enugu. I will say, Where are you? He said, I just came back from school and I'm just trying to, I said, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> because the where are you is not physical location. We are searching for you in the spirit. We have not seen you. Huh? The radar has not picked you. Meanwhile, we are flying elements. When aircrafts are flying, you don't monitor them by seeing them physically. You monitor them with the radar. We checked in the radar, you are missing. Eh? So the control tower cannot dictate your movement. You will crash anytime. The control tower is no more picking your movement. You are out of radar. So we ask you, where are you, bro? Where are you? You say, I'm in office. You are not in the office. Because what I did to ask you, where are you, is that I looked at the, your WhatsApp update. Eh? I read your WhatsApp update and I say, where are you? Meanwhile, I saw you yesterday. That means I know where you are physically. The where are you now is the person making this update eh, is in a different location in the spirit. So we ask, where are what? You. When you see that, will you stop the chat or not? There are some people I intentionally send you voice notes. Say, my friend, wow, wasting time. Look at how you are. I've not taken you serious. Huh? Anyway, I might not take you serious, and God will take you serious. God is the ultimate. Are you hearing me? Huh? Can you hear what I'm saying? I'm not God. God is the ultimate. Hey, Sister Chisholm, God is the ultimate in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I might not take you serious, you know. So, but God can take you serious. God knows your life. He knows your level. He knows what you are doing. Hmm? So, I'm not taking you serious. God can take you serious. Me, is my own option. I choose not to take you serious. And you can, God can take you serious and things will be happening. But for me, hmm? And the more you are saying, I want to see you, the more me I'm running away. Eh? As you are running to my door, me I'm running. Didn't you notice? I'm running on the opposite direction. There are two things I won't say. It. Amen. Should we stop here? Let's stop here. Go ye. I will just read this scripture and then I will leave you to meditate. Tomorrow we start. I have a lot of things to teach Jesus. Hi. I came with two jotters. That means the lecture is long. Wherever we stop. My target is to bring you into something. Hmm?
Why did God tell us to be praying like this? It is because the men he will choose in the last days are men of priesthood. Nobody will do anything useful. It's when you give yourself to priesthood, God will say, now say, um, okay, let's consider you. Anybody that is doing anything that is not, if you see anybody castigating prayer, talking down on prayer, don't, 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 don't go too far to ask whether the person is correct or not. Take it from me, the person is wrong. The, nobody talks down on prayer that can be correct. Once you see people saying it's not about one hour or six hours prayer, don't disturb yourself, leave those people. It doesn't matter the result they are producing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The emphasis of God is priesthood. We did not choose it. God chose it. And he chose us. Watch that person. It will not take time. The person will be off point. Be talking some things. You see the person will be. Because once you start doing like that. Very soon the person will be disillusioned. You will be adding many gospels. Huh? You will be putting many things. that they, they can start with teaching one thing. But before you know it. They will be adding many things. Huh? Because there is, they are not connected to the source. You have to be a man of priesthood to be connected to the heavenly power line. That is where the download is. Every week you bring fresh emphasis of, of, of the mind of God. And the testaments of God will be upon your bowels. The oracles of God will be upon your lips. Huh? And the utterance of God will be gushing out like fountains from you. Week after week, it will mean that the person is living with God. Huh? But these people, once you begin to say it's not about prayer, don't worry. You will, one day you finish teaching the ones. You know, many of them are teaching the things they read from books, watched on videos. One day it will finish. You will find out that what we are teaching, we read books or do many things. That's not where we go, where we are, we are teaching. There are many things we know. We pray and fast, sometimes three days dry. Just to get one topic of bed pangs. One. Our desire is not to teach a new thing. Our desire is to communicate the present revelational status of heaven, of God. So that if men abide in, in that teaching, eh, the grace for now will be released. There is grace for now. Say after me, grace for now. There is struggle because men have not tapped into the grace for now. Meanwhile, it takes a teaching to open up us to what is happening now. And then when we enter, the grace for now will be released. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will, in the next two years, some of you, you will, you will understand this in the teaching. When? Especially if you are in Revival Hub, mark the year 2024. The year what? 2024. Mark that year. When that year comes, eh, the things that will happen between now and that year will make you realize that what I'm saying is true. There are things I've seen in the spirit. There are things I've seen. And it's not by law. The reason why I'm teaching it is that it's not law. Are you hearing me? Because when God started off, he called many people. Then he started selecting. Then he started selecting. Set exam, remove. Set exam, remove. Until he ended up with a few. Sometimes, if the mercy of God is on your life, he will keep you one place. Like me that is running around to go to Lagos. Like, this my guy. He wanted to go to Zimbabwe. And become an international prophet. His mercy that kept him. If not, by the time you come back, it will be relevant. Didn't you notice that those prophetic movements are now irrelevant? There are no more. How many of you notice it? Those prophetic people that used to reign, that used to do all those things, it's not as if they are ministry. The only people that is there are the people that already have big followership. And there is nothing you can, those religious followers, as long as they are alive, they will be following. But new, new emphasis of God have left. There is no kayanos in what they are doing. There is no freshness. So imagine if you followed by now. You are still a young man. But you are an old prophet. An old prophet is not somebody that is old in age. It is somebody that is old in emphasis. Eh? You are still stuck on yesterday. Meanwhile you are young. 
you are an old prophet. Meanwhile, there are people 50 years, 60 years, eh? they are interested in what God is doing now. If you see the way they are in pursuit of God, somebody like my mother, do you know many of you here? My mother listens to my message more than many of you. The way she's quoting me, I say, ah, ah. she'll be quoting and be telling me which of the message, the blood, that there are things she learned. That where the thing torture is when I was preaching, the way I now shouted, I now say, ah, the thing now, because she liked the shout too. That thing that the shout does to Buddha is also, huh? she'll be analyzing it. Do you know how old she is? She is almost 60, my friend. She is not your mate. Hmm? That will mean that she is not young in the body. But she is young what? She is not an old prophet. But there are many listening to me here. You are an old prophet. Are you a young or old prophet? So I find mine for her. Leave it, leave it. She, the way she's looking, she may cry. Beat to come to the marriage. Verse 10. So this, those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. I was at, they gathered me. I was there. I know they gathered Buddha. I'm not sure. Did they gather you? Huh? They gathered me. They gathered, gathered me. Both bad and good. It's after me, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Guests. Verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, <laughs> let's read the remaining part. One, two, ready, go. You, are, you know you are going for a wedding. They are preparing you. They don't have your garment. When we say garment, it's not physical clothing in the spirit. Should I tell you? If you study the scripture, the Old Testament properly, you will see that nobody meets God without a garment. In fact, to meet God without a garment attracts instant cause. Have you read the book of Exodus? Where God was giving them the commandments. Eh? He said nobody should climb on the altar eh? with his parts open. That he should be covered. That once your nakedness is shown that the Lord will smite you. God doesn't see any. You must have a garment. The first thing that was procured for the running priesthood was what? He said Moses. Produce a garment for them. Let it be for glory and for what? So, you, it, the garment is the passport into realms in God. Many a times when God brings you into, if there is a new demand of God upon a generation, eh, those men have to find out the garment he, they need to execute that season. Sometimes it can be that God is demanding a, a fresh garment that is layered with consecration. A fresh garment that is layered with purity. And if it is true that God is demanding a garment layered with purity, you will notice that Satan will raise his own prophets and preachers. They'll be telling you it doesn't matter what you do. I was watching one guy on Facebook. Huh? Some of you know him. You used to follow him. They say his name is J. Israel, Abijah, J. Jordan, or Babylon. I don't know. Yeah? How many of you have heard of that guy? Somebody shared, I think his evangelist that shared what he was, what he was writing. And he, he said that sin is no more. I've forgotten what they are saying. Some of them, the Bible didn't say it. They will just cut out one phrase and write. Hmm? Once you see that, even if you don't know what God is doing, sometimes you know by what Satan is doing. You will know that the garment that God is requiring from our generation now is the garment of purity. Labor for it. 
Don't allow anything to spot your garment. Fight! Carry the garment. Layers of fidelity. I know you are not seeing, you are not watching Purunga View, you are not, that's not what I'm saying. There is still a demand, a higher demand of purity. What of your thoughts? Hmm? You know fire needs to still come there. There is still fire. This is the flames. Now, so we are no more sinning another, but God is saying we need a fresh garment to carry the weight of this season. Eh? And many people are just coming like that. So God looked out of 10,000 people coming and found out that it's only 100 that came with the measure of purity that the mantle and the anointing and the calling and election of this season demands. How many will he elect? How many out of 10,000? 100. Hundred. 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 Verse, verse 12. And he said unto him, Friend. <laughs> Even called him friend. How camest thou in he that not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He was speechless. It's unthinkable. Verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, Say after me, bind him. Say after me, bind him. Should I tell you? When you look at this scripture now, you will think it's not true. Do you know many ministries are bound? Many pastors are bound. Many people are under this. They are laboring on they are not, they now, many of them now started fasting, doing many things, hosting many things, programs, conventions, meetings. Some of them will even try to invite some people like us or, you know, but they are bound. Say after me, they are bound. May you not join yourself to a ministry or a man of God that is bound. Because you, might, you go there bound. Huh? You are not hearing me. You are those stuff, they are bound. They are under curse. They are under judgment. Save yourself. The Bible said here, then said the king to the servant, bind him what? Hand and foot. Take him away and cast him into outer darkness. Those people, this kind of people I'm talking about, the part of the way you know is that the person, we, if the person sees us do 24 hours, he will do his own 24 hours. Nothing will happen. He will fast. In his fasting, demons will afflict him. How many of you, something like this has happened to you? Say the truth. It has happened to you before. You are bound. It, you will not, okay, you people did not raise your hand. Some of you, you are bound. Some of you, the reason why, in fact, help me, Holy Ghost. In fact, there are three people here bound like that. If I allow you Eh? In the next two years, you will not make any progress in your work with God. You are bound. You will still be around church doing things, activities, but you are bound. You'll be doing what others are doing, but what they are doing is not producing your own result for you. Have you not seen it? Many people, some of you watching me, they will come and tell you, tell me that they have fasted, they have prayed, nothing is happening. You are bound, my friend. You are bound. And this one now, You know, Satan can bind a man. God can also bind. Men can also bind. These people are bound. And they said, take them to outer darkness. Where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse step 14 is where I'm going. I'll stop there. Let's read it together. One, two, ready, go. I didn't hear you. I, don't, I didn't hear you. God called me many years ago and said that he has made a wager on my life. Almost 10 years. I didn't understand it. I thought I did. Huh? There are wagers on many people's life. They don't know. The way you live will now prove whether the wager will be collected or not. They'll be telling you, take it easy. Take it easy. Oh yeah, take it easy now. 
as soon as you are dropping, another person collects it. You are not hearing me. You are not. You are not. You are not hearing me. You are not here. God, there is no time. The Bible said, what in the book of Revelation? That my reward is in my hand. Eh? Whatever you are doing, do it. I'm coming. That one is not last day's coming. It's the reward of now. Eh? God is coming back. He's coming with his reward. And his men that have understood the system of politicking in the kingdom. Eh? And has taken advantage of it. Very soon you will see election. People will find themselves in certain locations. When you speak to them, they will say, such as I have. You will say, uh-uh, this young guy, this young man is also saying such as I have. You know, you will, you will die eh? not aligning to the throne that they have. Huh? It's not boast. When God gives you a throne, it's election. You are now, you are elected. They did politics and you won. Huh? And anybody that did not win election many times is either you join the winning party or you automatically become a member of the opposition party. Is it not true? Is it, that's why you should be involved in politics because when the politics of heaven is true and men are elected into offices, elected into assignment, elected into positions, eh? after that time, everybody that is remaining can either serve under or become the opposition party. Where will you be found? Unfortunately, or rather fortunately, there is still allowance now for men to determine where they will find themselves. There is vacancy a lot in the realm of the spirit. Are you willing to pay the price? The price to be elected. The price to be brought into the eternal purpose that is in the heart of God. There is something that God has brought into our season. There is something about God that our season has captured. God wants to move in our generation like he has never moved before. Eh? The first rain and the later rain, he wants to bring it down in the first month. Who is going to carry it? Eh? Who is going to what? Carry it. We are looking for such men. Such men. When I yesterday I was crying, break me, mold me again. Break me, mold me. The way I'm looking at myself, it seems as if there are still organs in my life that is too strong for you to use. Break me, mold me. Huh? Take me to the cross again. It's better. It's better I am molded and shifted and knocked into alignment than that the day appeared and I think I'm among the number and I'm not. I think what I'm doing is counting yet it did not count. When the day ends and that day appears and you are not elected, God will still give you one pain. It can be one spiritual gift. He will give you the gift of word of knowledge and then you'll be calling phone numbers. Meanwhile, that you are calling phone numbers doesn't mean you have the authority to execute the purpose of God because the proof of election it's not necessarily spiritual gift, money, and all that. It's authority. Authority is the investment of God upon a life to execute his purposes. So when you, you see your authority at work, it will mean that there is an office that is functional. Authority is a proof of spiritual office. Eh? So when authority is manifest, there is an execution from a spiritual office. And it will mean that the election of God has has been stamped. There is a seed. When I start teaching tomorrow, there are words that look the same that you should mark. Chosen. Election. Eh? And see, These things are close together. When the seal of God comes upon a person, it means that the hand of eternity has put a stamp on that person. The question is, is it that God is partial? No. You see, what how God intends to do it is in plain sight. But people don't want to do it. Some of them will come and tell me I have a mighty calling. I will say, come to Newe and pray. They will, they will escape. They will say, man of God, eh, what I need is for you to impart me with this prayer grace. 
people looking for shortcuts up and down. Meanwhile, the demand of the season is for laborers. Men that have the capacity to give themselves to God that they are, until they are chiseled into those kind of people. Pay the price in different seasons. Give themselves to the obedient quotient. If God said be here now, you are there. If he said be there now, you are there. Imagine if, if Joseph and Mary refused to take Jesus to Egypt. Would they have been able to fulfill the purpose of God? What you don't know is that the book of Isaiah said, even that place that you are reading said, as they took him, he said, so that it will be fulfilled. What was in the book of Isaiah? Out of Egypt have I what? Called my son. So, but you, you, you don't know that what the prophecy captured eh, is that out of here. So what he is sending you there, you didn't know his prophecy that is manipulating you. So when a man disobeys in that measure, eh, election has disqualified him. Eh, because such a man has not aligned to what the rules of eternity captured for men that will carry the office in those seasons. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The person that will be the Messiah have to be the seed of David out of the natural. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, so God is saying in marriage, He's not saying that you have to marry like this, but you are not seeing it. When you now finish marrying, you will enjoy your marriage. See, when you missing it in marriage doesn't mean you will suffer. In fact, sometimes when you get it in marriage, eh, there can be one or two things. That is not, you might not be so rosy. Huh? But what you will see is that purpose must be achieved. Until you now find out. Huh? I think the lineage of Mary was traced to Nathan. Is it not true? Either Joseph or Mary. One of them is traced to Nathan, the prophet. The brother of David. Either the brother or the somebody. You know, there is, eh? is it, who is traced to Nathan, the prophet? Are you sure? The person I'm talking about is the prophet that went to David when he slept with somebody's, somebody's distant and prophesied to him. Why? You know that prophet is David's relation. Eh? That prophet, that prophet. One of Adam Mary. So you will not know until God tells you, oh yeah. That is the weight that destiny has captured. When you miss it, another person that is less qualified, that does the same thing, the hand of God will come on that person. And you come and look at, look at and say, look at small Chedo. Look at what he's doing. What did he do? We that have done this thing 20 years, 30 years, nothing has happened in our life. You are a fool. You are doing 20 years of wasting time. Simple obedience, you have not obeyed God. Simple money you cannot reject. And when you did not reject the money, you say, What does it mean? Is it not small money? Is it not small money I'm collecting from the offering? Huh? There are people, what the reason why they are rejected is that you tell them to count money, they collect it. Meanwhile, nobody is seeing it. Oh. But David was in the secret. He said, I have covenanted with my eyes that I will not behold the head. It's not that somebody will stop you. He said, no. A pastor will come and sleep with this person, sleep with it. When he finished, he said, grace covered me. God, the calling of God, the mandate. The mantles are be given to the church. Now, you don't have any mantle, my friend. What you have is just anointing. You don't have a seat. On the basis of God's election, eh, you, are, you are not admitted. And I need to tell you, as I told you, elections are possible because there are vacancies in the spirit. Can you understand it? Now, at this layer now, vacancies can be available. Are you getting the point? Then men will be elected. Another season will be open. And another higher level of vacancy will be available. 
And they will now tell these people to go and take the exam so that they will be elected into higher offices. Eh? It's possible in the last election you were good, but in this present election you lost. There are people that won first election. One local government chairman won this one. When he now came to the main one, they lost. It's even like that in ministry. They won first election. God elected them. Separated them from their mates. And another one. Separated them. When the main one came, they now fell. Because the reason why they fell is because when God started, the real issue started coming. God gave them money. Gave them fame. Eh? Gave them a lot of things. And then they felt they have arrived. And then another exam came. And the exam demands this exam now is not a test of suffering. It's a test of affluence. It's a test of influence. It's a test and they failed. They thought that's the end. They didn't know that everything is a test. For men looking up to election, everything is a test. There is nothing that is casual. Blessing is a test. Oh. Ah! So those people, any sister that comes, they will collect them and sleep. When I'm saying this thing, some of you will think I'm joking. A lot of young men are committing fornication and adultery, even old men. Pastors! If you are a pastor, you are, look, you are committing, you, you, you have to repent now or your crown will be taken from you. Some of, the problem is that some of these people have labored genuinely. But a season has come and that season has transited them out because of the kind of lifestyle that they began to live. So God will anoint you and when he anoints you, you know, the anointing makes you attractive. Yeah? Even if you are not handsome. If you are anointed, you will become attractive. All the ladies will be flocking to you. They will say, eh, what is it about you you don't like? Eh? Eh? Who will I ask? What is it about you you don't like? Eh? You know, Papa. <laughs> he, said, he said, I know. And I think I know. Hmm? That thing you don't like, people... When the anointing comes, strong one. Ladies, we say that that's, that's, that's what they now like about you. The same thing you say you don't like, they will now say that's what they like. That they like the way you are like Angolo fish. Like this. Is the anointing. <laughs> you don't know what that. Stay there now. I said I went to a meeting and a lady said fire was falling. Fire. Raw fire. And not one lady. Two. And I think it is more. But it's the people that were able to get across to me. Said that what they like is my smile. You are not with me. The fire is falling. They left fire and they, they are looking. They said my smile is heavenly. That is, is handsome. Is attractive. Man of God, you are in trouble. Because, are you with me? Because if you follow that, eh? if you are the one, you will say, say the truth. There is a young man, I blocked him on WhatsApp. Probably he's, he will hear me. He's chatting with a young lady, he's pastoring. Eh? And the young lady is saying, Pastor, be serious. Pastor, be serious. And he's saying, Pastor, be serious with his member, a lady. And he sent it to me and, and said, uh, uh, look at what is happening. You know, these people are tempting me. I was in fasting. So my heart is down. I was too weak to respond. He said, look at, she's tempting me. Pastor God's love, be serious. My friend, the gates of hell, it has opened to you. You see, I keep saying it. You can't... The journey is still long, but you can't survive this far. I've survived. 
without being able to know this one. Because some of them, some of them, some of those ladies can come under anointing. And then sometimes the anointing will leave and they will be normal spiritual sisters. So you can't chase them away. You need to know when the anointing came on them. Don't answer. Sometimes when they do it, you say, hey, what's this? My friend. They say, I don't like that brother. He doesn't, doesn't, all the time he'll be doing, he doesn't. Your crown is waiting for you. Your crown. For being able to do that, your crown. Say after me, your crown. Sometimes his sisters, they will say you are too stiff. What's up? You are too stiff. She's even walking like this. What's up, no? In our language, there is what they call Mwabara. There is Ezibo Maden Mwabara. You know what is Mwabara? Is this wooden knife. What's up? They will collect the real knife you have and give you Mwabara wooden knife and you now be carrying it and enter warfare with mobile wooden knife that's the day you will find out that some that small thing you did is enough to disqualify you he said is it by just a hug just a hug just a peck sometimes it's just a peck Raymond look at me Oga just a peck, a hug. <laughs> After the hug, you have not recovered for one year. Just a hug. They say it's a peck, just a peck. <laughs> Mumu you. Something is telling you don't do it. But the pressure was not, and you don't want to feel like Mumu. I'm telling you what I passed through. I've not passed through it. A group of ladies have gathered, ganged up against me and said, and said, I'm a homosexual. I mean spiritual sisters. Do you, do you know the reason why? Because I know the touch. I know touch. I didn't tap current. They all switched for me. Me, I did not know. Are you saying you don't know what it means to on switch? They all switched and say. Oga tap current. Oga, Oga, Oga. Me, I was going for dry fasting. I was, I was doing all manner. I was not seeing. They said, no, you are, you are a homosexual. One even told me, let me leave. Let me leave. Even some guys mounted pressure on me. They said, ah, the way, the way you are behaving, pray you. You are a virgin. It's only virgin that behave like this. You have not slept with many women. If you are slept, you should bust up waka. See, I'm not saying that if you are not a virgin, you're this thing also. But um, if you are one, it is precious before God. Listen to me. Don't allow people to fool you. I said this. Some people, somebody was countering me. I did not say. There are some, there are some callings you are not qualified for. What they are doing now for you is damage control. Because of the kind of life you lived, is damage. After me, damage control. What is keeping you is probably your sister's intercession or your mother's intercession. You have done too many bad things. You will not hear me until, even if God calls you, there is a point you get to your calling, your past will start calling for you. Yes, that's what, that's what destroyed A.A. Allen. Or rather, that's the challenge he had. Eh? His past came calling. Many people. There is a man now in America. He's a worship leader. One of the foremost worship leaders. He suffered homosexual abuse when he was younger. He's a black guy. You will know him. Huh? You know him, right? You know he has reverted back to it. Yes. Because that thing he suffered has not left him. He said, God has forgiven. He has forgiven you. Keep, keep doing. Some people, they, they are weak. They are any guy that touch you, you fall like basket. Hey! 
the problem with that is that if God now starts using you, it will start coming. Huh? You cannot resist guys that are tall and handsome. Satan will set them in your congregation. That's what Catherine Kuman said. She, she has to die a thousand deaths. Do you know why? She likes handsome young men. Have you not read that book? How many of you have read it? I hope you know that was her problem. She likes handsome guys. So the price she now has to pay for that was not to marry again. It's not as if she shouldn't marry, but her, there is a loss. There is, she has not, she decided the best way to deal with this thing is to cut off the link permanently. Are you getting the point to, oh, if you like, be living anyhow, be saying it doesn't matter. Eh? There is a mighty man of God. Do you know how he ended? He now slept with a lady. And the person has HIV. And he died. An anointed man died with HIV. Hmm? Continue saying it doesn't matter. Until they batter you. Batter you. Meanwhile, God is telling you that four of your children will be signs to a generation. Huh? And then you are living anyhow. And then they cut off your womb. Hmm? Hmm. So when they now cut off your womb, meanwhile, God told you four of your generation. Will it happen? You will now be crying for God. I need a miracle. I need a miracle in my life. I need a miracle in my life. I need a miracle in my life. Some of them will come here. If I have not, if the pastor didn't succeed in doing miracle for them, you are not powerful. Man of God, don't kill yourself for those people. Though they intentionally messed up their life. And then if you, are, if you have not quickly done anything for them, then you are not anointed. Yes, let me not be anointed. When I was warning you to live a life that doesn't... A life of principle will reduce too much craves, craves for miracles. Are you hearing me? Can you pray for one minute and ask the Lord, let this thing I heard enter my spirit. Can you pray? You are not praying. We just did introduction. Tomorrow, I will show you the secrets. Pray for one minute. Joshua, pray. Sahabante I will not be rejected. I will not be cast away. I will not miss it. Bahatambe no kususa mandeli, rada bande le cross kavata manata, diante kavande le poria kamba, makata makata karianto la dahasatia. Sahalas kadamanta, bari kabona tante. In Jesus, mighty name we pray.